it's, it's true. It is. It's what we did back then. Um, so basically, I'm a force outboard specialist from the West Coast. I've been doing force outboards for over 30 years. As a dealer for Chrysler, which turned into force, which turned into mercury, and that's why they sent me the email that you have. But real quick, I've got to run, but uh, in a nutshell, uh, are you having any more questions with your motor or, or not? Well, it's, it's bogging down. I wish I could talk to you a little bit more because I've got a lot of people are seeing my YouTube videos and having the same problem with that motor, force motor from 40 to 50 horsepower bogging down. Now, when you say bogging down, what do you mean? Well, I mean, you can be going all of a sudden on the lake and, and all of a sudden it'll just go from the horsepower decreases and the speed decreases from... Uh, I, mine decreased about 10 miles an hour. I was just going down the river, and all of a sudden it was going 30 miles an hour, and it went down to 20. Like some the jets got clogged up or something. No, no, no. So on the stator, you have a high and a low speed circuit. After about 3,000 RPMs, you change over to a high speed circuit on the stator. What's probably in reality happening is you probably have a bad stator. Okay. So, uh, which, which is electrical, has nothing to do with fuel. So what I want you to do, I want you to do a test for me. Let me give you, I got to run. Uh, let me give you an email address. Okay. And I don't want you to be giving this. I, I don't have time to help people worldwide. With the West Coast is enough for me. And what we're going to do is we're going to slowly work through this problem. So okay. I want you to run the motor in your test tank that you have or your barrel. I want you to film the carburetor. I want to see what's coming out of the carburetor. I want to determine whether we have a broken reed valve or not. I don't think so. Um, those, the bigger force motors, the bigger motors that went to the square tip reed, we had a lot of breaks with those, and we were getting blowback through the carburetor, but your symptoms are not bad. You're telling me you're driving down the river, power's fine, and all of a sudden you're losing power. So, I want to make sure we're not smoking out the hood. So, I need you to do a water test for me. I want you to run the motor without the hood. If running it without the hood solves the problem, you tell me everything. We're getting smoke underneath the cowling, and then what's happening is it's ingesting its own smoke. Two strokes do not like to ingest their own smoke. They'll walk down and start running horrible. So, let's run that motor back out on the river. When it starts going bad, I want you to take off the cowling and do the same run. If your problem goes away, we just found the problem. Um, another thing, you're running, the motor starts, does it start with any problem? No, no. Okay. Starts right up in the morning. When you punch it, does it just take off and fly out of the hole? No, it doesn't fly out of the hole. Right now, it's not flying out of the hole. It's, it's still kind of goes out of the hole slowly and I get it I can't get it up to full speed it's uh, it's still about 10 miles an hour slower than it was at one time and you have taken a compression test correct compression test no okay whenever you work on an outboard motor the very for every outboard that comes into the shop and I've literally worked on thousands of force motors I don't care if it comes in for a water pump you know what we do we do a leak down test on the motor and we do a compression test. And the reason we do that is for, for a couple fold. You tell the customer right off the bat, we're not putting any money into this motor unless you want to rebuild it or do something else because you've got a cylinder with a broken ring or low compression. So right off the bat, take a compression gauge. Uh, when you take your compression test, you want to do it with your butterfly open on the carburetor. And you want to do it at cranking speed, uh, preferably in the barrel and neutral spine. And we aren't looking for a number. We're not looking for 130 pounds, 140 pounds. Although yours will come in right around 98, 40 horse. You're going to come in right around 145 pounds. We're looking for the same number on both. We don't want 145 on cylinder number one and cylinder number two is 70. If you find that right off the bat, we, we found we have a broken ring on the piston. Bad fuel low-octane fuel or fuel that's been sitting uh, for a while. We have a lot of problems, not so much on the, where you're at, but we have a lot of problems on the West Coast. Our fuel goes back really, really quick. So if you have fuel that sits in a boat for a couple months, it loses about four octane.
knock pain point. What outboard motors do not have, like your car does, is a knock sensor. When a knock sensor goes off in your car, your computer goes, hmm, let's back off the timing on that one cylinder and give it some more fuel. When you're uh, start pinging or detonating on an outboard motor, there is no computer to go, let's back off on that cylinder and give it more fuel. It goes ahead and detonates and blows the rings off. So, probably not your problem because you say it starts right up in the water. But no matter what, let's do a compression test, and then I want you to do a water test. I want you to find the problem, then I want you to take off the hood, and let's see if the problem changes. Very common to smoke out inside the cowling and cause exactly what you're describing. Then let's go from there. Okay. We will work through the problem. So, I, I did watch your video, so just so you know, do not put anything over the mouth of the carburetor. No filter, no shirt, no, no pantyhose, no <laughs> nothing. That motor, you may be digging when I saw that, that carburetor is an open, we call it an open loop. There's no filter on the carburetor because there's no dirt, there's no gravel roads, there's nothing to kick in it. It's like a car or a motorcycle, you have to have a filter. So that carburetor is designed for open atmosphere with no restriction. You go ahead and cut your hand over the front of the carburetor or, or any type of a filter. Now what we're doing is through the Venturi, we are sucking way more fuel out of the nozzle up from the bowl than we're supposed to be. Yeah. And now we're flooding out the motor making the problem worse. I have a problem your needle and seat might be dirty. Or I have a, a feeling your needle and seat might be getting debris through it. You might be a float level that's too high. There's a thousand other things we can look at, but I want to start with the, the basics. Let's do a compression test. You email me, said my compression is 140 on each cylinder. That's good. Then let's go out to the water. I want you to pull that hood off. I want you to look for two things. I want you to look for a lot of fuel sitting back through the carburetors you're running in. If it is, we have a broken recal. If all of a sudden the thing takes off and runs perfect, we're smoking out the gallon. Check for those two things. Let's just move forward. All right, because I'm I'm leaking a little bit of fuel on that line. There's two little lines below that come to are the. You talk, are, are, are you talking about the primer, sir? David? Yes, the primer. There's two lines that go to that primer, I think, or two little small one eighth inch rubber hoses that go underneath of that primer, and. That leaks a little bit down into the bottom of the cowl. Those lines do. Uh, okay, so go ahead and replace them. Um, any fuel with alcohol nowadays will swell almost any line we throw at it. Um, go ahead and replace those with genuine parts from Mercury. Go to, um, we can send them to you. The thing is just get a hold of Crowley Marine. Oh, I know Crowley them. I've already bought some parts from them. What was that? I bought some parts for them already. From Crowley? Yeah, sure have. That's yeah, fine. So go ahead and they sell the, they'll sell you the, just like we do here on the West Coast, they'll sell you the um, line in bolt and then you cut it to length. Replace that. So what you have is on the bottom of the carburetor, you've got a little nipple. That feeds fuel, just gravity feeds out. What the primer does from that is when you hit your choke button, that little solenoid actuates, opens up your primer, and draws fuel back into the intake manifold to help your motor start. So that's just a primer circuit. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to be eliminating that circuit down the road to see if that primer is constantly dumping. Because if you have a primer that's constantly dumping fuel, you're going to way flood out that motor. It's just an easy test. You just basically take off the hose from the, you've got a hose from the fuel bowl that goes to the little primer. The other hose goes to the manifold. Okay. You're going to want to take off that hose while it's running, make sure no fuel's coming out of it, and plug off the little nipple on the top of your either manifold or carburetor. There were different models. We, we put it in different places. But it achieves the same thing. And we want to make sure that primer isn't over fueling that motor. But, but we're not there yet. You, you, you have to, when you're troubleshooting these things, you do one step at a time. So compression, go out to the motor, I like, take off the hood when the screws up, and then look for fuel popping back from 
from the carburetor and do not cover the front of the carburetor. Well, that's okay. Outboard motor is thin. So okay. You, you know, you, you know, that's how the reed valve works. You know, the reed valve opens up, it draws in its fuel through low pressure, comes back, it slams shut. Now there's pressure in the crankcase. The reed valve's closed, forces the fuel through your intake port into combustion. If the reed valve doesn't seal really well, you're going to get a tiny bit of blowback. That's common in all outboards. What okay. you don't want is a pop, 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 down through the carburetor in terms of fuel coming out. I don't, your model reed, your model motor didn't use a set of reeds that was really bad as far as breaking valves. Some of them did, but yours wasn't one of them. Could still broke. I've seen a few, uh, but it, I mean, you're talking out of a thousand, you know, fours, forties, and fifties we've seen in the shop. Yeah, I might have seen one broke. It's just not common. So, anyways, I've got to run. You've got my email. I will help you through this, but it's going to be a little bit of a task to get it done. Then you can get on the internet and tell everybody what you found. But, yeah. All right, I'll email you so you'll have mine, and then I'll do these tests, and you can help me walk through this. And whatever yeah. videos I make, I will. Got you. Anyway, you have a good day, and good luck with this thing. I'll walk you through it. We'll, we'll get it. I've never had one we couldn't find the problem. Wow. Okay. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.